Mr. Maya Wan from uh, Lions Roar Oakland Camp. We are actually um, going to talk about the Moors today. There's a sister that uh, called me the other day and wanted me to go over the Moors, how they relate to us being Israelites. So I'm going to do just that. I guess uh, she was in, cla in a classroom at one of the local colleges here. And uh, the instructor was uh, kind of jamming her up, saying that the Moors are their own people. And she was saying, no, there's more to it, that the Moors are black. And all it means is that they're black. And I told her I I'd go into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up for other brothers and sisters to see this information. So I um, just want to say shalom to all the brothers out there just doing the work. All the brothers, all the camps out there, going out there strong and staying strong and trying to teach many people. The brothers and sisters who are going into churches and uh, teaching the people that they know and on the buses and so forth. Keep up the good work. And uh, to the new brothers and sisters that just came into this truth, that's finding this video, welcome home to you. Welcome home. This is the truth. This is the real truth of the Bible. This is who uh, the Bible belongs to. Who are the Israelites and uh, as you uh, grow in this truth you will learn more and more and more but you are not a more according to this okay you are an Israelite so what I want to do first I want to go into this book called Webster's New World Dictionary this is an old New World's Dictionary this is the Amer American language uh, this is a revised version and uh, let me see, when was this printed? This was actually issued in 1983. Okay, Warner, first Warner Books printing, December 1982. Okay, I want to show you a few words in this book. <clears throat> We're going to do some wordplay. First thing I want to go to is uh, let's go to a color since we always say black. We say black all the time, right? Oh, he's a black man. Let's see what this color says. Uh, let's go to maroon. Maroon, okay? Since we always say, play the color game. Okay, maroon. Chestnut. Dark, brownish, red. Okay, that's the color maroon. Chestnut, dark brownish red. Okay. Uh, so now that we know what that is, uh, that color maroon. Um, let's, I'm just sitting here thinking. So let's go to uh, let's go from here, and I want to take you to the Bible dictionary. Like I said, I'm I'm putting this together as I go. I, I'm not going to edit this video. I'm just going to bring it out. Where I want to go to here is, this is Zondervan, by the way, this is Zondervan Bible Dictionary, Compact Bible Dictionary. You can purchase this at Amazon. It's good to have one of these books. Okay. Let's go to Ruddy. Ruddy, since King David was Ruddy. It says, Ruddy, a word used to refer to a red or fair complexion. In contrast to the dark skin of the Hebrews. See that? And in reference 1 Samuel 16 and 12, 1 Samuel 17, verse 42, and Song of Solomon chapter 5 and 10. So it's telling you what ruddy means. A word used to refer to a red or fair complexion in contrast to the dark skin of the Hebrews. So the Hebrews are dark skinned people. See, so when it says red, it's talking about either young, or young person with ready, or it's talking about the different complexions of the dark-skinned Hebrews, ranging from light brown to dark brown. In other words, maroon. <clears throat> okay, maroon, dark brownish red, just like we just read for ready same thing all right now let's look up the word more now let's go to the word more 
because maroon, keep that in your mind. We're gonna play on that, right? I'm gonna show you what that word that is used again throughout history. <clears throat> okay, so where I wanna go to is more. Here it is. More. Any of a Muslim people of Northwest Africa. When did the Muslims become a, a people or a nation? <clears throat> it's somebody who basically just inherits a religion. Okay, they take on a religion or they change over to a religion, being a Muslim or Muslim. Okay, so these people who accepted being a Muslim, they all live in Northwest Africa. Okay, more. A tract of open wasteland, that's not what I want. More, to hold in place by cables of the shore or by anchors. So, there's three verses of more. We want that first one. People of Northwest Africa. Moorish. See? It's just like the word Moreno. Which means black. Or dark, dark brown. Okay? So uh, we're gonna go to another word. We're gonna stick with it. Let's go to Negro. And one of the reasons why I like this dictionary is because when it refers to the Negro, it tells you something that these new dictionaries do not tell us about the Negro. This is a uh, you know, I think it was printed in the 70s. Negro. Look at what it says here. A member of the dominant group of mankind in Africa, characterized generally by a dark skin. So it's telling you that the Negroes are different from all other African races. A member of the Negroid group. Any person with some Negro ancestors. Okay. Down below it says Negroid. Designating or of one of the major groups of mankind. See that? including most of the peoples of Africa south of the Sahara. So it's telling you where we dwelt at. The Negroes dwelt right around the Sahara Desert in Africa. So now we know who the Maroons are. We know who the Moors are. Now let's see if the Negroes are hem of Hamitic descent. Because it's telling you where we dwell. So let's go to Ham. And most of you know in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary the breakdown of Ham. So let's go there real quick. Let's find Ham. Ham. Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races. Semicolon. Not the Negroes. See that? I highlighted it. Not the Negroes. So Negroes is not part of Ham. It's going to tell you now who's part of Ham. But the Egyptians, the Ethiopians, the Libyans, and the Canaanites. Genesis chapter 10 and 6, the Table of Nations. So it's telling you who Ham is. And we're not Canaan either, so you can't say the Negroes are Canaan. Okay? So I would have to say that we're of something else. We're not of the nation of Ham. So we either got to be from where? Jaffa or from um, Shem. So we're not from Jaffa. We don't dwell in the islands. Okay. Jaffa was there long before the Negroes got there. Now let's go to the Bible. Let's find out what they call Simeon. Alright. Let's go to Acts chapter 13. I'm just walking you through down memory lane right now. Acts 13. This is the book of Acts chapter 13 in the 1611 Bible. It says, Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. <clears throat> As Barnabas and Simon, which is in the book of Acts, that was called Niger or Niger and Lucius of Cyrene Okay, remember Cyrene? Remember the one that helped Yahweh Shai? Simon of Cyrene helped Yahweh Shai carry his cross? He's from Cyrene. Cyrene is over there at uh, what, what used to be called Libya. Libya has moved. 
Libya used to be all the way to the west of Africa, now it's moved. All right, so now Cyrene <coughs> is on <coughs> in the west of Africa, up north, okay? Past Libya, Morocco area, Algeria, up in that area. A little below that. Lucius of Cyrene and Mene, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrach, and Saul. Okay, so it's telling you that <coughs> Simon, or Simeon, and Barnabas were called Niger, which means black. Okay? Means black. So you got to remember in Wisdom of Solomon, or uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5, it said that I am black but comely. I am black and handsome. Okay, so now we know what more means. Let's go to uh, Nature Knows No Color Line. Let's see what this says. Nature Knows No Color Line by J.A. Rogers. I go to this book quite a bit. There's so much uh, information in this book right here. <clears throat> Racial intermixture in Spain and Portugal. Second paragraph, we're on page 55. It says, these Africans were Moors, sometimes called Arabs, because of their language. So they were being called Moors or Arab, because of, not because of what they looked like, but because of their language, their tongue. Remember in the book of Acts chapter uh, 2, they were all speaking different languages. They came from all over, right? But Simon and, well, Simeon and Barnabas was called Niger. Moor means black. We read that in the dictionary. Brown. It says, to the earlier Greeks, the Moors, now why would the Greeks be Moors? Why would they be black? Because the Israelites were Greeks. And the Israelites were black. As we read about the skin of King David, he was ruddy. All right? So the Israelites were black. He was ruddy, which meant that he had brown complexion. All right? He had a, he had a bronze complexion like Yahushai. It says, to the earlier Greeks, the Moors, were black or dark people. Okay? There's a word maros, like maroon. It's the same thing. It means black or brown. And to the Romans, maris, black, woolly haired people, known synonymously as Ethiopes. Niger. Didn't we just read that in the Bible? Niger. Meaning Negro. And Afer, meaning African, even as late as the 5th century AD, Procopius, Roman historian, calls the people of Morocco black. Okay, so now we got two things in order. We know that the Moors are Negroes. And we know that the Negroes are not of Ham. And we know that Niger is in the Bible, which will make the Israelites black. The Simeon and Barnabas were Israelites. So now that we know that, let's move on. We're gonna we're gonna flip the page over. To page. Uh, we're gonna go to page uh, 123 in the same book. 123. Okay. Uh, let's drop down here. It says, especially dark were the Jews of Spain and Portugal. The Portuguese Jews were very dark, said Picard. The Duchess, remember that word Duchess, we're going to revisit that. The Duchess, Del Bronte's wife of Napoleon's ambassador to Portugal said that the Jew, the Negro, wait a minute, the Jew, the Negro, and the Portuguese could be seen in a single person. So dark were the Jews, especially of Portugal and southern Spain, that many whites thought all Jews were black or dark. See that? We're talking about Spain and Dutch right now. Okay. Well, it's fine. Let's look at a picture of a. Jew. These are Jews. 
These are all Jews. These are the kings that ruled in Spain. These were noble families. These weren't slaves. These are the coats of arms of the Negroes that dwelt up in the Europe, European lands. See? Alright, you see all of these? These were Jews. And you can, you can look this up. You go to Russia and you go to the military, or you go to the museum, you, you'll see the same pictures. Okay, <clears throat> so now I want to go to this book. It's called uh, Allison Blakely Blacks, the Evolution in the Racial Imagery Dutch in a Modern Society World. So let's go here. I'm going to open up this book. We're going to go to. Um, I'm going to go to page 35, I'm going to drop down one, two, three, and like I said, I'm kind of rushing through this, alright, it says, although some tribes are encountered who practice cannibalism, on the whole, Negroes are not savages, so it's telling you that even though we came out of Africa, there were some tribes that were practicing cannibalism that was not Negro. Those were the Hamite tribes. It says, on the whole, Negroes are not savages. They practice agriculture and cattle breeding and various industries. They smelt and work iron. Now, smelting and working iron, you know what that is? That's, that's called, um, what do you call that? They smelt work, they smelt and work iron, that's called alchemy, okay, alchemy, this was a trade that we had, okay, we were smelting and working iron, this is how we fought in wars, we made our swords, we took our picks in our, in our, uh, in our holes and we shaped them in the swords, right, smelt and work iron, this is how we made our swords, this is how we won our wars, okay, so alchemy was a part of the Jews. Okay, so it said not only that, cattle breeding in various industries. We were we were um, sheep herders. That's what we did. So when we went, when we went into West Africa, we began to become cattle herders or shepherds. It says weave and dye got cotton. We used to do that in the Old Testament. Okay, when we made our uh, clothing, we would weave and dye our garments. Okay, goods and have much aptitude aptitude for commerce that's what we did we, we were uh, tradesmen that's how Muhammad found out who he was by trading with the Jews they form states whose government however is mostly horrible despotic horribly despotic in their religion superstition and fetish, fetishism occupy at large space the fetishism was keeping the commandments so there's certain things that we did that other tribes and other nations didn't understand why we did it. Okay, it says in their religion, superstition, and fetishism occupy a large space. However, Islam is making increasingly greater inroads among the ne Negroes. Why? Because when you become a Moor, you're actually forced into Islam. Or when you are a Moor, you're forced into Islam. Okay. So the Negroes, they had to take Islam or die, they would kill them. That's what's going on over there in the Middle East right now. Okay. So that's that's the aspect of what we did. Let me show you another example. We got another example here. Yeah. Okay. This is in the same book, Blacks in the Dutch World. This is Adoration of the Magi. Now, who was calling themselves Magi? Wasn't the Jews calling themselves Magi? Wasn't they calling Christ Magi? Or Magi? Meaning Master. Magi, right? This is the deliberate inclusion of Casper the Black King in the Dutch. Celebration of the Epiphany reflects a high regard for Africa and the black Africans he symbolized. So we had a black king in, in the Dutchess. You see, that was Dutch. So what does that mean? That mean that we was ruling Europe. 
the blacks were ruling Europe at a time. See, there was two Romes. All right, the blacks ruled the last empire of Rome. It says this was a continuation of attitudes shown in the medieval period when black saints were proclaimed in parts of Europe. See that? So we all know that the Israelites are the saints. So the Israelites was dwelling in Europe too. It says the statue of St. Maurice in the chapel of St. Killian at Magdeburg in the 17th century bust and older relics of St. Gregory the Moor at the church of St. Geroin in Cologne testified to the strength of these notions and to their proximity to the Netherlands. All right, so it's telling you that we were ruling and we also had our own saints. Okay, I'm going to jump over here to the next page. This is page uh, 205. It says, The declining recognition for the black saints, this is when the whites started coming back in power, the Edomites. It says, The declining, during the Renaissance period, The declining recognition for the black saints may simply have been a natural consequence of the warning significance of the Holy Roman Empire, which was their main sponsor. However, this is a subject which requires more intense study focusing on Germany. So it's telling you this is where a lot of our history is in Germany. Okay. A lot of of the Israelites or the Negroes history is in Germany. Okay. But the Catholics were taking over Rome and that's when the Renaissance period took over. Alright, they start pushing us out. That's one of the reasons why King James in England uh, had, to, had to write the Bible. Or not write the Bible, translate the Bible into English. Because we would have been all Catholic if that wasn't the case. I'm going to drop down here. It says, of the inland kingdoms that to the west of Dahomey is called Mahi. That to the northeast is Aio. So now grave calls the former of these Yahoo. The former of these Yahoo. Do you know what Yahoo means? Yahoo for one. You, you see a chocolate drink. They call that Yahoo, right? Yahoo means Judah. It's another decrepit word for Judah. Or Yahawada. Okay. Okay, this is called Hebrewisms of West Africa by Joseph J. Williams, and I've been in this book many times, breaking down stuff for y'all. Um, just want to prove why they say Yahoo in West Africa. Okay, page 64, Hebrewisms of West Africa, Yahudi. Later, while criticizing a map that had been published by T. Edward Bowditch in 1819, he says, beginning then at the top of the map, I find a place called Yahudi, a country or town of non-existence. Yahudi simply implies Jews, the tribe of Jews, okay, etc. Which term the Muslims apply to those people of the Mosaic faith. So why is why are they of the Mosaic faith if they're Jews? Because they've been forced converts who inhabit the lower atlas in the districts of Suez. That's why when you watch Roots, the movie Roots and Kuta Kit, they come over on ships and he's speaking uh, Islamic. That's because his mama and his daddy and his grandparents been forced into Islam. That's why. If they didn't, if they didn't choose Islam, they died. They got chopped up into pieces. So that was the way they uh, were able to keep the family line going. That's how the hell we got to America. We were able to s- sustain. It says they also applied the term. Yahudi to the Hebrew or Jewish tribes, whether native Africans or not, who inhabit Mora. There it is again, Maroon, Mora, Mariti, right? Some parts of Fulani and the neighborhood of Timbuktu. Okay. So I could go on and on. Of these people, I imagine the author of the information spoke when he endeavored to make Mr. Bowditch comprehend the import of the word Yahuda. Yahudi. Alright. But they all come out of Morocco. Look at that. That's where we fled. We fled into West Africa in 70 AD. So everything is there for us. We got the history. We got the facts. We just got to know how to put it together like I'm showing you how to do it now. And this is a rush job. 
This is a rush job. I'm doing this for a sister, but I want everybody to see it. All right. Or Yahawada. Okay. But as there was little or either of these known before the reign of Chuda, their description properly belongs to the history. So so-called white man came over. He only he's only given us a brief understanding of who we was. He keeps saying that the history was destroyed before he got there. Okay? That's what he keeps saying. Let's go one more place in here. See if I can find it. Okay, so this is this part is uh, page 200, and it's talking about the Ebos, and it's basically saying that you know of our of the Negroes, the Negroes go ranged in shades of different brown. So it's telling you here their skin is generally of a yellowish tinge, but vary into a jet black. Okay, so it's telling you that we went uh, that our skin complexions were various, just like today in America, we have various skin uh, different shades of brown. I'm going to drop down here. It says, besides these, we sometimes got a few natives of Benin, Benjamin, which is about 160 or 170 miles from Bani. These resemble the e Ebos, so they look just like the Jews. Ebos is another word for Jews as well, or Hebrews. Ebos mean Hebrew. Okay? It's like that plague they got going on, the e Ebonic plague or whatever they call that. The, Ebo, the Ebos are Hebrews. These resemble the Ebos and it's probably were partly of the same nation. See? Esau knows they are the same nation. They are the most orderly and well behaved of all the blacks. In their own country they are famous for the manufacture of a beautiful sort of tablecloth. So we did all kinds of stuff as Israelites. But we are in West Africa. Uh, okay, I'm going to show you this other book. This is called The History of Atlantic Slave Trade, Black Cargoes. Daniel P. Mannix in collaboration with Malcolm Cawley. Okay. So let me show you that they knew who they was coming to get, who they were coming to get. The so-called white man. When he came over to put us into slavery, this book was falling apart. It's an old book, man. Let me show you here. They knew who they were coming to get. Okay. So this is page uh, 167 of the same book. And Esau's going to give you statistics on who he came and got. Okay. Origin given merely as Africa, the Gambia, Senegal, Guinea, Gold Coast, and the Slave Coast, Windward Coast, Calabar, mostly Ibo. See that? Mostly Ibo. Hebrew. Those are the Hebrew Israelites that came over. A B, B O. That's another form of decrepit Hebrew. Ephek. Alright, that's another form of Hebrew. Ephraim. From the Bight of Biafra, Ephek is Ephraim. Angola, including the Congo, Madagascar. Now it's going to break down because we know Madagascar is way on the other side. It says slave brought direct from Africa, slaves re imported from the West Indies, slaves from other North American colonies. So it's, look at that, giving you the stats of how many Negroes they took. Look how many they took from Madagascar, the least. Everything they took was from West Africa. See the top there? 20,000, 3,652. This is one year's worth. Okay, slaves brought direct from Africa, 45,000. Slaves re-imported from the West Indies, 7,000. Slaves from other North American colonies, 370. Now let's go down and see what they what they wrote. It says the 3,860 Negroes. So we know who the Negroes are now. Those are the Jews from Angola were Bantus. The 1,011 slaves from Madagascar provided the slight Mongol Mongoloid strains. So those are 
Moab and Ammon mixed in with the Jakes, the black man, okay, uh, with Ham. This is 1,011 slaves from Madagascar, that small little island. Y'all know where Madagascar is? There's a map, let me get a map real quick. This is Africa. No, that's uh, South America. Madagascar, right there. See that? That's Madagascar. Here's Africa. See? Madagascar, way on the east of Africa. They didn't go all in here. They didn't go all to the east, because I'm going to tell you that the Ethiopians, they were actually uh, meeting up. You know, Psalms 83, it says that the congregations got together. I got a book that shows that the Ethiopian, they sent their own people over to uh, Europe before the slave trade took place. And they warned the Ethiopians that that slave trade was about to take place. And what they did was they, the Ethiopians went back and told all their people. Said, if the so-called white man come on slave ships, you ought to cut off his head before you even get to the sand. So they already knew that so-called white man was not going to rape and rob and pillage their land. Because they met in that great congregation of Esau, the tabernacles, okay? So he came over here to West Africa because he knew this is where the Jews were. All in West Africa, Sahara Desert, all up in there. See? Let me go back down here. So reading again. The 3,860 Negroes from Angola were Bantus. The 1,011 slaves from Madagascar provide the slight mong mongoloid strain in the Virginia Negro population. See that? And at least half of the 3,652 Senegambian slaves must have been Caucasoid or Hermetic. So he knows who he brought over here. You see? He's telling you that some were Mongoloid. He's telling you that some were Caucasoid or Hermetic. Meaning they came from the nation of Ham and Esau. Or the nation of Moab and Ammon. But they were mixed in. But I highlighted in blue. It says, of all the slaves whose African origins were specified, however... Perhaps 80% were true Negroes from where? West Africa. So you can't tell me Esau don't know who he brought over here or who are the Israelites. He got documentation on it. He got records on you Negroes. He knows who families are exactly Israelites and who are not. He knows. Okay. I'm going to close up this book. Just for reference, I keep this one in a plastic bag, and I never take it to camp. If you want to know more about um, when we was ruling in England and Europe, uh, you can read this book. It's called The Ancient and Modern Britons by David Mac Ritchie, and this book is pretty expensive if you can find it. And Amazon. Uh, when I was purchasing it, it was already almost a thousand dollars. I lucked up and got this one for a pretty decent price. I think I paid like forty bucks for it. But uh, that was about six years ago. Um, volume two, and there's also a volume one. I got the volume one in a different uh, from a college. You see, it's falling apart already. But this goes into detail. But who the ancient Britons were. It also talks about, you guys ever heard of President Kennedy? The Kennedys come out of um, this book. And the first Kennedys were black. Okay? Maybe that's why they was getting shot. But the first Kennedys were black. And they spelled their name a little different. I just opened the book. I didn't want to go here, but look. A loyal Earl of Angus, through, though he succeeded in feathering his own nest, very skillful, was a great improvement on a savage marauding there goes that word maroon marauding all right that word goes back and forth marauding black douglas a wandering irreconceivable reconcilable more or a saracen so the more they were calling us more when we was there they didn't call us negro they was calling us moors whose hatred of stone and lime was embodied in the saying that he liked better to hear the lark sing than the, the lark is a bird than the mouse squeak. 
civilizations had made a distinct stride in Scotland. So this is when we was ruling in Scotland too. When the Red Douglas put down the black. Okay, so the Red Douglas, that's a family. And he's talking about the so-called Edomites. They called them Red Douglases. Alright, and this is during the Renaissance period too. So Esau's red. That's how we know who Esau is right there. Okay. Put down the black. So in this book, what you'll see is the fighting and the taking over of power from the Edomites to the uh, Negroes, a.k.a. Israelites. Okay. Or people calling them Moors. But the Israelites was ruling here too. And it's just basically going to show you how we was losing our power all through this book. This book is um, not really an easy book to read. Uh, it requires uh, a lot of meditation when you read it. It's, uh, it's pretty wordy. But uh, he has the families and everything broken down in this book, which is really nice. Alright. So, I'm going to go ahead. And... When you read these books, you have to go back in history to find out who were these people in real in, in, in real retrospect. Okay, so I showed you <clears throat> different books on um, how the books started to become more and more whitewashed. Okay, and how they start taking over the names of the Jews and calling themselves Jews. And uh, that you know that book that I just showed you showed you all called Ancient Britons. What did I, what did I do with it? Um, let me show you something while it's on my mind. I'm trying to slide. Alright. I got to go back to this book because there's some, some real good knowledge in here. Uh, right here. Um, okay, now look at this. Um, it says, even in England, there are straight-haired and curly-haired Romanis. The two indicating not a different resultant from white ad admixture, but entirely different original stocks. Okay. So this is talking about Esau, the so-called white man. This is when he was up in England. It's about to give him up. It says, these two last divisions may be held to be fairly represented by the long-haired cave-dwelling Kuthax. See that? So, these people went in and took over our area. They took over our area, see? They became us. They took over our history. You understand? They took over our history. So, um... When you read these books, you got to go through with a fine tooth and comb, and you have to use intellect, because if you don't have intellect, you will not understand. All right, now I could continue in this book, but I guess I could do another video on this. All right, so with that, I'm going to say, Shalom. This is the word of the Lord of hosts. I took you from the pastures and from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone and have destroyed all the enemies in your path. I will make you a great name among the great ones of the earth. I will assign a place for my people in Israel. There I will plant them and they shall dwell in their own land. 